This is session four, reservoirs and accumulators for the Airbus A350. There are two reservoirs, one for each of the hydraulic systems on the A350, which are the green and yellow hydraulic systems. Your green reservoir is installed on the inner right side of the rear belly fairing, and your yellow reservoir is installed in the main landing gear bay. So, if you happen to see a test question that's uh, you know asking you where is the green reservoir installed, then you'll be able to answer that. It's the inner right side of the rear belly fairing. And where is the yellow reservoir installed? Okay, in the main landing gear bay. All right, what are the reservoirs here for? Reservoirs are there to hold hydraulic fluid uh, that are going to be going to the pumps. To all your different pumps, your EDPs, AMPs, and your hydraulic auxiliary pump as well. Um, each of the reservoirs, they're, they are not the same capacity. They're the same type, but they have different capacities. And the um, reservoirs, just like all the other <laughs> reservoirs, whether it's IE320, etc., they need to be self-pressurized or kept pressurized at a certain point so there's avo avoidance of cavitation. Um, the cell pressurization that goes on in these reservoirs are maintained at 70 PSI. There are two pressure relief valves. There's going to be one for air um, and one for pressure, so air or liquids. That's your, that's your fluid because uh, air is also considered fluid, by the way. And then your, your overpressure valve. So those are your two your two uh, relief valves. You have one on the high pressure side and then also one on the low pressure side. You also have a, a pressure transducer and this is here for being uh, able to detect when there's too low of a pressure which is going to be below 22 psi. When that occurs there's going to be a warning that's going to be sent to the cockpit. There's also a depressurization switch on the ground service panel that you can operate manually um, that simply is there so you can um, do the depressurization. There's also a, a valve there to do that. If you want to do it manually, there's a rotating knob on the actual valve that you um, turn and that's going to relieve the pressure. Now, when it comes to accumulators, it's going to be different. Um, these particular accumulators on the A350 are not to be refilled. So, if you happen to see a question that says, or asks, is it possible to do a refill of the gas charge of accumulators? Then you're gonna know the answer. It's gonna be no, you cannot. These are, uh, these are accumulators that have, are filled with helium, and they're charged, and, and that's it. There's, there's no refilling of it. Once there, if there's some problem or damage to it, it just has to be replaced. Now, that's on whether or not you can refill it. What about discharging the accumulators? Can you do that? The answer is yes, you can. You can actually discharge the accumulators. Now, if you're going to discharge for whatever reason, um, you need to do that. There's, um, you'll see on there a safety screw. Um, that's just there um, so that there's not an accidental operation of that discharge. Okay, so you're going to have to, um, and you're going to have to undo that so that you can discharge. So for maintenance, um, if you're you're going to be removing that system, just be very careful when you do that. Um, obviously, there's these things are under pressure. Okay. So you have that, and that'll be the way you're going to depressurize the, that, that accumulator. There's also a, a, an indication on there letting you know that it's depressurized. And what is that indication? And that may or may not be a test question. Chan uh, I will say that whatever questions you see on the handout um, will be on the test. It's going to be a rare moment that you may find that a test question is present and you didn't see it on a handout. Um, if you happen to come across that, by the way, do let us know. Um, but anyway, that's what that is. Um, the visual indication is actually red. You'll see at the bottom of it, there's a, a like a little window, and it'll show a, a red color, meaning that it's depressurized. It's not. It's not operational as it's intended. And as far as your your fluid level indications, there are those. Um, those are going to be. 
um, there for determining that fuel quantity, or excuse me, that fluid quantity. Um, and it's going to be using that pressure, uh, a transmitter, a transducer, for measuring that. Also, there's a temperature, uh, temperature sensors to measure the temperature of the hydraulic fluid in those reservoirs. And those are all, again, relate, related to the ECAM page, um, hide page in particular of the ECAM, so you can see, you know, what those are. Uh, there's also an indicator uh, for the quantity of hydraulic fluid that's installed on the green ground service panel, and that's going to show the low or the high fluid quantity in each of the reservoirs. So the green is the main one for both reservoirs, the yellow and the green. And if everything's good, it's just kind of like on a fire extinguisher, but you know, if you have the needle dead center, then that's where everything's good. That's where it should be. Obviously, if it's in a position that has in INOP, there is an actual um, indication that says INOP, that means inoperable, then obviously if the pointer is in, in that position, then that's not the correct um, quantity. Okay, so the reservoir quantity is corrected uh, in relation, by the way, to the fluid return temperature. So they go hand in hand. Um, you can also use a visual indicator um, to do a check you know, obviously of the reservoir, but there are those, there's that transducer to, to let you know and give that reading. You also will need to bleed air out of the reservoir because air does get trapped and you'll need to get air if you're going to be draining it. So on these reservoirs, uh, if you need to do that because you're doing some maintenance procedures such as, you know, maybe you're replacing an item, um, some kind of, you're replacing an item or part, whatever, associated with it, you need to bleed the air out of the system, okay? And then you can continue with your tasks. Now, there is a, um, a way to do this automatically. There is an automatic bleed device um, that's controlled uh, on the ground uh, if the reservoir is pressurized and if that system is sensing that there's air trapped in the reservoir. You can also do a manual bleed, so just so you know there's two ways to bleed the air out of the reservoir. There's the automatic bleed device and then also you can do this manually. There's a knob on the side valve that's installed on the body of the actual automatic bleed device. So that's your option number two if you needed to do that. Also you can manually um, uh, d you operate the drain valve that lets you remove the hydraulic fluid from the reservoir. This is session five on temperature control for the Airbus A350 hydraulic system. On the uh, temperature control, we're talking about controlling the temperature of the hydraulic fluids and the hydraulic system. And this is to keep the fluid within a certain range between 20 to 95 degrees Celsius. That's between about 68 to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and that's throughout the duration of the flight. There's also uh, your hydraulic heat exchangers that are participating in this pr process to control the temperature. And the hydraulic, uh, hydraulic heat exchangers are there to cool. These are located in the fuel tanks. They are fuel submerged uh, heat exchangers that are installed in the wing tanks since that's where the fuel tanks are located. And the exchangers are controlled by a special thermal bypass valve that's very, it's fully passive. Uh, and bypasses the exchanger for uh, case drain fluid temperature that's less than a certain amount, a certain temperature, you know, like 60 degrees Celsius. Um, if there's any fluid change, temperature change at all, then the valve is going to either open or close the path through the hydraulic uh, heat exchanger. There's also uh, control valves. These are going to be control valves for each uh, hydraulic system. So your green and yellow system each have three temperature control valves. Those are going to be located at the wing tips and upstream of the most remote actuator. So your outer aileron and also one, there's one in the uh, trimmable horizontal stabilizer compartment. The temperature control valves are temperature and differential pressure controlled. They are supplying, um, the valves are supplying a metered flow that's going from high pressure to low pressure uh, if necessary and it's changing um, the hydraulic power to a thermal power. 
So then, of course, it's increasing the temperature. And the whole idea here is just to ensure that the hydraulic fluid is not too cold and it needs to be heated up. And this is the way that it's going to do it um, is through that conversion. This is session six and our final session on the A350 hydraulic system. This is on the manifolds, just so you have an awareness of these manifolds on the A350. You have a low pressure and high pressure manifold filter manifolds. Um, the manifolds are identical for the green and the yellow systems. So you have the low pressure for the return flow from the users. That's going to go through a filter, through the return filter before it goes back to the reservoir. So you have that as well as the high pressure manifold. Again, those high pressure manifolds are the exact same for the green and the yellow systems. There are four um, EDP high pressure manifolds that are installed. Um, there's going to be a filter there, of course, as it goes, you know, before it goes to the hydraulic consumers like your flight controls and landing gear. There's also a pressure transducer that's going to sense the system pressure. And obviously, if the pressure is past, you know, is, is too low, there's going to be an alert, you know, to the cockpit. You also have a case strain manifold. The case strain manifold is installed in the front spar, that, and this is for the yellow system and the rear spar, and that's going to be for the green system of the wing. So for case drain manifold, that is going to be in the front spar for the yellow system and the rear spar for the green. This is also going to include, um, the manifold is going to include a thermal bypass valve that's going to send the fluid to, remember what I talked about, the hydraulic heat exchangers in the fuel tanks um, in the wings. Those are, those, that's what that I was, um, that's what I'm talking about, thermal bypass valve sending that fluid to that. Or it'll do it directly to the return line. You also, of course, have the filters for your CD, for your case drain. There's temperature sensors there. It's also um, there to um, sense, obviously, the temperature um, of the hydraulic for um, any overheat. So if, if it gets too hot, then the alert's going to go off and be sent to the cockpit. Um, there's also uh, the pressure transducer for the detection logic of the uncontained engine rotor failure, your UERF, so uncontained engine rotor failure. Um, how many case drain manifolds are there? There's one for each EDP, so there are four, total of four case drain manifolds. All right, I hope that gives you an, um, a good orientation of the hydraulic system on the Airbus A350. And if you have any questions regarding any of this, please do not hesitate to email us and we will be happy to uh, answer your questions. Thank you for your participation.